I am uh, Thomas Michel. I live in Ankara, Turkey. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, the uh, cosmologists tell us that everything started with the Big Bang. And many of them uh, say where we're heading is towards the Big Crunch. For me, the Big Crunch is the challenge of, of crunching my 24-page paper into a 15-minute uh, presentation this morning. <coughs> Uh, what, I, uh, what I want to concentrate on is the theological dimension of Fetilekilen's uh, thought that underlies his role as a spiritual director and teacher of internalized Islamic virtue. Uh, I'll attempt to look at the specific uh, understanding of Islamic faith that, that Gulen communicates to the young scholars, and teachers, the businessmen, the householders who make up the community formed by his vision. It's this theological perspective that expresses Gulen's role as spiritual master whose counsel has guided individual Muslims and formed a workable and coherent community among his disciples. Uh, the first part of my paper I'm going to, to skip over very briefly. It has basically two points. The first is uh, Gulen's use of the Quran and, and the Hadith. Like all Islamic scholars, uh, this, his role is that of explaining what is to be found in the Quran and Hadith. I think this is mainly important as an answer to those who say that Gulen is somehow an innovator or coming up with something new or different or that he's starting a cult. Uh, my, I'm convinced that he does nothing but elaborate what is to be found in the Quran and in the Hadith. My second point in, in the, it is uh, Gilen's uh, relationship to the Sufi movement. Quite a bit has been written about this, so I don't think I need to go into it once again this morning, basically except to say that, that Gulen does distinguish himself from the Sufis. He's not a member of any tariqa. He does not have a peer. Uh, but he does have many concerns in common with the Sufis, and he will quote very often from the Sufi tradition, particularly in his writings and in his speeches, the most quoted person, the person that he refers to most often, is Mervana Jalaluddin Rumi. And, uh, and we'll see that many of his concerns are the same as the concerns of the Sufis. The idea of interiorizing Islamic, uh, uh, Islamic values, Islamic practices, finding the interior meaning, and so for him, uh, Islamic uh, faith is, is virtue oriented, like uh, as it is with the Sufis. The uh, strong uh, emphasis on uh, uh, on love. Uh, some scholars, I particularly like uh, the analysis of uh, Rifat Atai, who's in the audience uh, today, who sees uh, Yulain as reviving the. Ahlus Sufa movement, the kind of pre-Sufi movement of the first generations of Muslims in in Mecca. I think that uh, that uh, is, a, is a really important insight. Well, um, moving to the second part of my my talk, uh, one of the things that uh, one of the shared concerns between Gilan and the Sufi movement is this idea of how Muslims can interiorize <coughs> Islamic values so that they shape and form their lives. And Gulen pulls out what I see to be two pillars of the spirituality or the, 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 uh, the theological dimension of the community that we, for convenience, call the Gulen community. These are the twin ideas of ikhlas, which we may translate as purity of intention, and ibadah, which is often translated as uh, worship. 
Now, ikhlas, uh, both of these ideas have, have a long history in the Islamic tradition. You'll, you'll know, you remember that, that one of the chapters of the Quran is called the Surah al-Ikhlas. And the aspect that, that Gulen emphasizes most often, and here we go back to the, to the sermons as Pim was talking about in the first talk, uh, is this idea that everything that, that a person does, a person does how? In order to, to, to serve, to, 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 to carry out the pleasure of God, does for the, uh, to give pleasure to God. This is the idea, really, of, of Iqlas. Now, he says it doesn't matter whether you're doing something important or unimportant, whether you're doing something big or small, What's important is that you do this for, for God's pleasure. You do this in order to serve God. This is the whole point of, of a class. Uh, now, uh, Gulen says that, uh, that a class, and he quotes Rumi in this, he quotes Mevlana to the effect that, he says, if good deeds were a body, their soul would be ikhlas. In other words, if the purity of intention, if a pure intention is there, then the dead material, you might say, of the action becomes alive. It, it, it has the soul in it. So he says it's sincerity, or purity of intention, that makes deeds live, <coughs> effective, have everlasting value. And so with sincerity to, to animate uh, deeds spiritually, all without that, all human act endeavors would remain lifeless, ephemeral, ultimately worthless, he says. But those who fly to God, he says, with purity of intention, with pure intentions, and with faithfulness, will fly with God's pleasure and will reach their, their goal. Now, he goes on to say that uh, he quotes Bayezid. Uh, Abu Yazid al-Bistami, to say that it's through sincerity, not through human deeds, that a person goes to God. It's on the basis of a person's sincerity that God judges acts, not <coughs> on the mag 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 magnitude or the notoriety of the deed. The size and quality of deeds is, is, is unimportant. So it's this intentionality, the conviction that a person's intention determines the value of a deed is in keeping, of course, with the Islamic tradition. Well, now what's the importance of, uh, of this? The importance is that, let's take the example of meeting guests at the airport. There's nothing more boring than that, waiting around for the airport to go, meeting people you don't know, taking them somewhere. But he's saying, if you do this with pure intention, with the idea of serving God, it has value. And it has, it has its value. The same thing whether you're, whether you're distributing meat to the poor at, 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 at Eid al-Adha, if you're working on a, a, a distributing food in a soup kitchen, whatever, this has its value. And I think that this idea of purity of intention, pure intention in what you're doing, really has an effect in forming the cohesiveness of the, uh, of the Gulen community. Why? Because there's nothing that can tear a community apart better than people calling attention to themselves working for their own uh, recognition, uh, competing with one another, resentful when the other gets some sort of an honor or a higher position or a, or a more prestigious uh, appointment <coughs> than they. But the important, the idea is that no matter what you're doing, if your intention is to serve God, is to please God, no matter how unimportant it is, it's, it's, it's valuable. I think this, this is one concept that, that really has been uh, uh, effective. And uh, I'll, I'll just conclude. Since uh, it is sincerity or purity of intention that enables God's servants 
he says, to keep focused on serving God alone, thus making their actions, great or small, acceptable to God. If Gudan has been able to instill a sense of harmony and united service has met among his followers, it's largely because of the emphasis he has put on Ikhlas. Now, I want to look at the second pillar of, is, uh, of the spirituality of this movement, and it's what we call Ibada. Ibada, for any of you who know Arabic, is usually translated as worship. And it usually refers to the uh, ritual acts that the Muslims perform, the daily prayers, the, uh, the, the fast uh, during Ramadan, the, the um, zakat, the, the, the poor tax, or the pilgrimage to Mecca. Uh, but Gulen expand, expands upon this traditional view of ibadah, and he defines it very broadly. Here's what he says. He says, Ibadah is fulfilling God's commands in one's daily life and fulfilling the obligations of being God's servant. It's interesting, and that's the end of the quotation, it's interesting to note that there's no specific reference here to ritual performance in this definition. In Gulen's view, Ritual obligations are included in the concept of ibadah, but the notion goes far beyond ritual performance to include everything that one does to live and act according to God's will. When a member of the Jamaat teaches physics in Kyrgyzstan, he is performing ibadah. He's worshiping God. When a businessman in Izmir donates funds so that schools, dialogue centers, well-digging projects, and publishing houses can be founded and maintained, he's doing ibadah. His donations are a form of divine worship. Now worship in this broad sense is the primary task of man and woman as God's Khalifa, or vice regent on earth. Gulen holds, and here I'm going to quote him, he says that humanity's vice regency for the Creator takes place in an unusually broad sphere that encompasses acts ranging from believing in Him, worshiping Him, to understanding the mysteries within things and the cause of natural phenomena.